Hi, my name is John Owen and I'm a translator from German to English. I'm going to be reading an extract of my sample translation of the novel Aufqual by Bodo Munch on Wieland, which is published on the New Books in German website. Um, the section I'm going to be reading today comes from the no middle of the novel. It's a novel written by three writers in a collective, which reflects the idea that the characters, the characters are in a squatters collective in Kreuzberg in southwestern Berlin in the 1980s. This section comes from the middle of the, comes from the point when the squatters have moved to a new part of Kreuzberg um, and it's about one of their favourite bars in the area. Us and God. We missed the home bar. For a while we found old school pubs interesting, where event activists, historians of Kreuzberg and squatters got drunk together. But we had soon had enough of the old soaks in their conversation, so Claudius created God. The old workers' pub on the mezzanine level had been run by previous squatters as Café Morazan, in solidarity with the revolutionaries in El Salvador. Claudius found their name stupid. I wanted to have a name that rises above everything, and I liked the idea of people saying, let's go to God. I thought that sounded good. From Cobbles to Tor onwards, lots of the building had to God sprayed on them. Those not in the know turned up near the wall and would ask where God was. Claudius laughed when thinking about them. Past Cotty, then past the kebab towers until you reach the end. Turn around at the wall and go back three buildings. That's how you'll find your way to God. As a dealer, Claudius had money, and it was his many swarming assistants who renovated the place. When it was finished, finished he gave him 150 Deutschmarks to stock the bar with drinks for the grand opening. A few weeks later, it was full every night. God was a place for parties in an area that had had none before. The connection has been broken was the title of a collection of Gilles Deleuze and Michel Foucault's writing, published by Merve in 1977, and this would also serve as a motto for the bar. What applied to philosophy, not attempting to reenact the 1920s, not analysing global structures using Hegelian logic, not explaining everything using neo-Kantian categorical explanations, could also apply to nightlife. Punk was about rebarbarising a pop music which had been throttled by excessive asceticism. People who pogo dance trust complete strangers. Long live the amateur. It was mostly the area's nocturnal scene, finally tired of the Omile who came. So the four regulars from the immediate area stuck out. There was the lame neighbour who rode around Kreuzberg with stabilisers on his bike all day. God normally only opened after 11pm and he was nearly always among the first at the bar. He walked as though he'd had polio as a child but in reality it was his boozing which had led to his apparent disability. Always slightly unsteady and with a glass of mineral water in his hand, he would lean against the bar and would explain to us night after night that he would be able to walk again by the end of the following summer. Then there was the Hungarian neighbour, a stocky, sweaty builder with unusually large paws. He was terribly lonely and took strong antidepressants. It was in God that he smoked weed for the first time. That was it for him. Red-eyed but contented in God, You'd see him smoking joints there until the small hours. He passed his antidepressants on to the Herty Punk. This Herty Punk was a young guy from Kainer who was doing an apprenticeship in the department store Herty. His true love was, however, punk. He would come into God wearing his work uniform, a blue apron with the Herty logo, and would go off to work once the bar was closed. Then there was the gay neighbour. He shared a small flat with his mother around the corner. A friendly, distinguished man, he combed what little hair he had over his face as though he wanted to hide behind it. Whenever he went out, he would wear a deeply unfashionable white suit. We knew that an appearance in God meant that he'd been beaten up. Nasty locals who did not like gay people would lie and wait for him. He could not go home to his mother with a bloody face and blood-spattered trousers, so he would stand in front of the mirror in the toilets and attempt to cover up the injuries to his face with his hair. The blood spat on his flares would be treated with a mixture of Schulteis beer and dishwasher, dishwater. He would not even tell Thomas, who had befriended him, who had done this to him, and would respond to any questions with quiet and evasive answers. Claudius was a dealer with principles. He did not sell hard drugs. Hash was a cushy business for him, which also had the advantage of meaning he did not have to have any dealings with the government. He had set God up, but it was not long before he had no longer enjoyed his own bar. There was too much cocaine. The slow-witted guys behind this innovation were not his kind of hunters. They might do art, but in reality they were just junkies, and people like this were not on the level he expected for God. 
One night, during one of the Hattie Punks concerts, the floor under the toilets collapsed. That was the end of God.